Praise the Lord, dear friends. I want to welcome you to our Bible doctrine class in English. So before we start, let's pray. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we give this time into your hands. Lord, we pray that you will minister to us today, even as we are going to study your word, O oh Master. I pray for all those who are watching me to learn your word with so much of excitement and openness. I pray that you will minister to them. And in Jesus' name, Amen. Today I want to share with you the next part of this teaching on Philippians. Now, the theme for today, today's teaching is preaching for the wrong motives. Preaching for the wrong motives. Can't believe, right? But when I was studying this portion very carefully, I was so shocked to know that people could preach with wrong motives and advance themselves than the kingdom of God. I couldn't believe it because for the last 43 years, I have been serving God and I've been preaching with a sincere heart to see that souls will be brought to Jesus Christ. I have no other purpose of living, but the only purpose is to see that one day India will be washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I want you to read from Philippians chapter 1 verses 7, 15 to 18. Philippians chapter 1 verses 15 to 18. It is true, everybody take your Bibles. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice. Now, I, you have read this scripture and I want you to quickly write down what do you understand about these scriptures I have read for you. Can you quickly write it down? What do you understand from chapter 1 verses 15 to 18? Write three things or four things quickly in your paper right now. So as you write this or as you are writing, I want you to know today that Apostle Paul was very fervent in what he was doing. He was so convinced about the gospel of Jesus Christ. There was no other purpose Apostle Paul lived for. His only desire was to live for Jesus and to see that the gospel would spread all over Asia. I'm sure by this time you would have finished writing. Now keep that notes and continue to write what I'm going to give you 
so that you will be able to understand as to what exactly verses 15, 16, 17, 18 means. Are you ready? Now, number one, here Apostle Paul is writing his heart out. There are many a times as leaders, we pour our heart to the people or our hearts to the people to whom we minister. Number two, his imprisonment has been an incentive to preaching. His imprisonment has been an incentive to preaching. Just imagine, who would say this? Now tell me, please, will you say like this? I'm put in the jail and I'm so happy that the gospel is spreading? Or will I be thinking about my own self inside the jail? Number three, the incentive worked in two ways. Now when I say to you, his imprisonment has been an incentive to preaching, that, that incentive worked in two ways. Number one, there were some and there were many who loved Paul and when they saw him lying in the prison, they put all their efforts to spread the gospel. That is incentive one. There were many people who loved Apostle Paul and so when they saw him in the prison, they felt the urgency to preach and proclaim the gospel because of seeing Apostle Paul in the jail. That is number one incentive. Number two incentive is the others moved by what Paul calls, I want you to write down this Greek word, erithia, write it down, E-R-I-T-H-E-I-A, erithia, E-R-I-T-H-E-I-A. Now, what is this, the, what is the meaning of this word erithia? Now, many preached with selfish motives. Many preached with selfish motives. Now, what are the, what, what is that? Pastor Paul, how can somebody preach with selfish motive? Now, this word erithia means... It's an interesting word. Write it down. It denotes a self-seeking pursuit of political office by unfair means. I'll say it again. It denotes a self-seeking pursuit of political office by unfair motives. Now you see there, or unfair means. Now they use anything they can, not motivated by the spirit, but motivated by some selfish desire or selfish ambitions or using this method coming to a position through political power. That is one of the meanings of the word erithia. Now this word is opposite of the word 
sincerity. So if I put it in another way, erithia means total manipulation and it has nothing to do with sincerity. Now you see here, Apostle Paul says, one person, one incentive that the gospel is spreading is because the ones who loved me, they saw me in the jail and they preached the gospel. But the others, Erithia, they had selfish motives in preaching the gospel for their own gain. But what Apostle Paul is telling is, both are incentives because at the end, whether they do genuinely, sincerely, or with selfish motives, the end result is the gospel is preached. Now, who will think like this? As I am sharing with you, I encourage you to write these notes and make it a point, okay? Now, continue to understand the word erithia means self-seeking and selfish ambitions. The word erithia means self-seeking and self-ambition, which was out to advance itself and never thought about the methods it used to attain it ends. Now the word means it's seeking and a selfish ambition, self-seeking and selfish ambition. It will use any type of a method to achieve the end result. They can use politics, cut down people and blast about others and do anything they can do but just to get the results. That's one of the meanings of the word erithia. Now, Apostle Paul says, so there were people who preached so hard the gospel because Paul was in the prison. Now, the others preached with so much of vengeance towards Paul and they wanted to advance their influence and their prestige and lessen Paul's influence. You understand? Now see here, there's one group, they preached because Paul was in the prison, they were genuine, they were sincere, so they took it as a challenge and they preached. But the others, they took this Paul being in the prison as an advantage for themselves so that they could influence people and build up their prestige and totally lessen the influence of Apostle Paul. Can you believe this? I still remember when I had my massive heart attack and I was thrown inside the hospital. And then when I came out, it took several months for me to recover from this attack. And then I met some Christian brethren. So they came and they were talking to me and they were saying, Pastor Paul, when you had a massive heart attack and you were in the church, in the hospital, many pastors came to us and said, now your tiger is gone and the church will split and then we all can also get some people. 
Now, when I heard this, if you hear, hear such things, how you will feel, right? I heard this and I felt bad because, you know, it's talking about me in this manner and pastors. And those people came and they were crying. And they said, we could never believe that they would speak like this when you were, you were in that emergency. Almost your life was going and they were having tea together and talking, saying, Tiger is gone. It's all over from now and his church will split. And they were laughing and joking. Now, see here, almost this was the state of of Apostle Paul in the prison. Because he was in the prison, these people who were against Apostle Paul, they thought that they will use this situation to exploit whatever Apostle Paul has done and use his imprisonment as a gain for them to build up their prestige their influence and their popularity. Now, I want to challenge all of you leaders who are watching me. I beg you and I plead with you, please do not operate in this manner. Many a times when someone says, so and so prayed and I was healed, those days, 10 years, 15 years back, I used to feel very proud when people said that Pastor Paul prayed and we were healed. But today I, I don't want them to say even my name while they give a testimony. Because for me, the end result is not boasting about me or my church or my growth. The end result is the spreading of the gospel and advancing the church. You understand? Now you may ask me why these people were angry with Paul. There was a time I always thought that everybody liked me. But later I understood that everyone cannot like a person. There will be people who will dislike. When you are very open and transparent in your heart before people, you expect the same from others, isn't it? And that's my problem. I'm very open to people. I talk it out. I share with them. I tell them everything. And I expected the same thing with them. And I thought everybody liked me. But later I understood many who were with me also never liked me. But see here, we must always understand that when you are a leader, when you are a pastor, when you are a, a powerful servant of God, or even if you are not and you are just a believer, people, all of them may not like you. But that should not be the cause for us to stop preaching the gospel. Now see, Apostle Paul, everybody didn't like him. But still, his passion was so powerful, no one could stop him in spreading the gospel. Now, you may wonder why people didn't like Apostle Paul. Write it point by point. Number one, why people didn't like Apostle Paul? Apostle Paul had many enemies. Why Apostle Paul had many enemies? Now, because he was open to the uncircumcised Gentiles, People were very upset with him. Now, Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 to 16, I would like you to read. 
Paul was criticized for his openness to uncircumcised Gentiles. His, number two, his willingness to eat with them. See now? Number three, to baptize them. Number four, to allow them into leadership roles in the church. Now many Jewish Christians, believers, never could accept the Gentiles becoming leaders within the church. That's why Paul and Peter, Paul had to talk to Peter very sternly and explain to him about his belief that how Gentiles and for the Jews, Jesus died. It was not only for the Jewish people. Now, because Paul preached about this and he accepted the Gentiles into the leadership of the church and he accepted them, the uncircumcised Gentiles, to eat with him, he baptized them. People did not like Apostle Paul. Now, I want you to read Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 to 16, if you can put it on the screen. Galatians chapter 2, can you please put the reference? Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 to 16. I wanted to pop it up on the screen. Now, when you read this portion, you will understand why Apostle Paul was criticized by the people. Because many preached that the Gentiles have to be circumcised so that they can become true believers in Christ. But Apostle Paul said, no. The moment you accept Jesus Christ, you don't need to go through circumcision. Now, this was contradicting. Now, you take some churches. They are very stern about what they believe. Now, we as growing churches, when we do things differently, people will say, oh, in Paul Tangia's church, it's like Infant Jesus Church. It's so large. So many people go. He doesn't know anybody there. He doesn't even visit people. You know, they have no caring, nothing. So people criticize and they say, they say so many things. But you know, we have to be focused on what God has called us for. And we should never compromise with the Bible. That's the basic rule for all of us. Now, secondly, why Apostle Paul was criticized? Can you put 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 1 on the screen? Now when you read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1, the reason they criticized Paul was because he was not a good orator. Number one, they criticized him because he, his openness to the uncircumcised Gentiles, his willingness to eat with them, to baptize them, to allow them in leadership roles. And secondly, they criticized him because he, didn't, he, was, he was not a good orator or a good precise apostle Paul because of his unwillingness to be quiet about his strange beliefs about the gospel to the Gentiles. They were very angry because Apostle Paul kept telling that the gospel must not only be preached to the Jewish people, but it must be preached to the Gentiles also. So because of all these things and his such power he had 
to influence the people, many turned against him as enemies. Now, who are they? They are also co-workers in God's kingdom. Now, you see that? They were not people who were, you know, worshippers of other gods. They were also believers of the Lord Jesus Christ or ministers or leaders. Now imagine they were so angry with him that when he was put inside the prison, they took it as an advantage and they preached out of envy and rivalry. They wanted to somehow see to it. They never preached out of love for the lost or out of a good will towards Paul. The reason they preached was just to attack and to weaken Paul's leadership. Now, does it is it familiar to us? Many a times we see that in the Christian circle that people tend to put down other churches and they tend to lift up their church and they preach out of competition and they use methods, very deceptive methods to attract people. I have always, in my 43 years of ministry, I have always prayed for every church in India and every church in Bangalore. I have always kept to that belief that FGAG is not the best church. Those who have been with me will be able to say an Amen. Because I believe that one church cannot reach the world. But the, the beauty should be that we all who are serving God must serve with that same love and that compassion for the lost in the world. Now you understand? Now but these people who were against Paul, what they wanted to do, because they preached out of rivalry and envy. They wanted to weaken the leadership of Paul. Because they started to say now, Paul is now weak and he is unable to preach now. And uh, he is in the prison. What can he do now? So don't go after Paul but come after us. We are the ones who are capable of preaching and teaching. When I went through the worst in my life, many prophets and preachers called and told a lot of our church members, Ichabod, that means the glory has departed from FGAG. So you all come to our churches because he is now lost it. Everything is over for him. So you all join our churches so that our church is very powerful and holy. And there were some churches who went and visited our members house to house and told them, Paul Tange, it's all over. It's everything is over. He's going through the worst and some churches even took series of messages on family and without that, how can you have a church to attract people from our church? Now I heard all these things and I heard it, I'm telling you. I saw it. Everything was there happening. But the only thing I did was every day for 10 hours, I used to go to the basement and spend time with God. I said to God, I said, God, maybe this is the time I'm like David 
or like Joseph, this is the time of my testing. But the days will come that you will work through me and turn my ministry around. Now you see here, friends, there will be people who will be against you and they will even want to preach far better than you to prove to the people that they are more powerful than you are as a pastor. And that's what these preachers did when Apostle Paul was in the jail. And that's why Apostle Paul said, some are preaching out of envy and rivalry just to have a competition with my ministry so that they can weaken me and show me as a weak person to the Roman church. How sad it is, isn't it? But I pray that as we keep studying the book of Philippians or the epistle to the Philippian church, our lives will be transformed. Our lives will change. And if you are a castle leader or an elder, you should never work with the spirit of competition. He, one day, two of my pastors, those days in my office, I had asked them to, I wanted to give them an award. Whoever baptizes the highest number of people, the pastor who brings, I said I would give them an award. And finally, two of my pastors almost hit each other to prove that they had brought the highest number. When I heard this, I, was, I felt so hurt in my spirit. And I thought competition should never be there in the ministry. We should never compete in our leadership. We should always stand together with one another as a family to build up the kingdom of God. Nothing should attract people to us. I've been praying to God. The 50 days I was in the presence of God, I told God, God, I don't want any attraction towards me. I don't want to look like a charismatic leader before people. You have given me only a passion which I received because of my father's life and because of me praying in the bush right around this area. And she said, God, give me that passion. I want to faithfully serve you. Now I am 60 and soon I'll be 61. The rest of the years you give to me, I want to serve you so that your kingdom will advance forward. Now I want you to continue to write the notes. On the other hand, you have faith-filled, bold witnesses. Who are they? Who are those? You'll see this. It's, it's so beautiful. Now see here, faith-filled, bold witnesses. Because Apostle Paul was in the prison, they started to boldly witness about Jesus Christ. On the other hand, you see in the balance, they have, you have selfish ambition. Everything to do with themselves. I went and prayed and people were healed. Sister so-and-so prayed, people were healed. We should get out of this and we should say, we went and prayed and God healed us. I prayed for 50 days. For what? Not to show myself spiritual, but I wanted God to break me and to prepare me from, to the next level of my ministry in Kanuri Church. 38 years I have served in Indranagar. So I waited before God, take away the things which are not right with you so that when I move to Kanuru, I want to be like a student who has graduated from the Bible school with that passion, 
walking out of the Bible college, I want to have the same spirit after serving you for 43 years. So I tell all leaders who are watching here, please do not do any work with a selfish ambition or out of envy or out of jealousy or to push yourself above others. If you do like that, then you are in the wrong front. One pastor went to America and as I being the chairman of this district, so he told me and he went. His associate pastor came to me and he said to me, after the pastor went, I have baptized more people than our senior pastor. Then I understood what was in his mind. He was trying to say to me that he was far better than the senior pastor. So I immediately cautioned and I, I told him, I told him, this attitude is not good. I said, when your pastor has trusted you and left you and gone for the ministry, don't have any selfish ambitions. Only work under his instructions so that when he comes, he will give you double blessings. That pastor felt so bad, he said sorry to me. And he said, thank you for correcting me. I want to tell you today, friends, as you're watching me, we as Christian leaders and we as strong believers in Christ, we should never compete with others. We should do the work of God with a desire and a passion. Now, Paul sees their motives and he's still happy. Why? Because he's saying, at the end, I am so happy that the gospel is spreading all over. Now, what was Paul's goal? Can somebody tell me? What was Paul's goal? Paul's total desire was that entire Rome and Asia should hear the gospel and not even one person should be left out from hearing the gospel. So Apostle Paul says, I'm so happy. Whatever their motive is, I am happy that they are helping me to accomplish the desire I have within myself in spreading the gospel all over Rome and whole of Asia. Now, Paul claims his right. Now, here in this context, Paul is saying, I am rejoicing. Now, you tell me, if people are against you and they are competing with you in the ministry and they are doing, will you rejoice? Speak your heart out. You will not, right? It's very difficult for us to rejoice in this context. But Apostle Paul is telling, my desire being fulfilled in the gospel being preached, I am so happy and I am thankful to God. Now see this, dear friends. Even in the midst of the conflict, Apostle Paul is joyfully rejoicing in God. Now you may ask me, Pastor Paul, so all these four verses, what do we learn today from these verses? Number one, what do I learn from these four verses today? Number one, n write it down. Paul knew Nothing of personal jealousy. Paul knew nothing of personal jealousy or of personal resentment. Now, on one side, a group is totally against you. 
totally against you. But for Paul, he had nothing against them. See how beautiful it is? He had no resentment, he had no jealous, or he was not jealousy. He was not upset with them. Absolute no resentment. End of the day, he says, I'm happy. Now what a wonderful lesson you and I, we can learn today from this beautiful man passage and a mighty man called Apostle Paul. I'll say it again. Paul knew nothing of personal jealousy or of personal resentment. He says, so long as Christ was preached, he did not care who received the credit and the prestige. Now this is key. I want to say it again. So long as Jesus Christ was preached, Paul did not care who received the credit and the prestige. I was thinking to myself, after all these years of serving him, my whole thought about building the church and expanding the ministry has changed. And it has changed for good. Now I have said to God, God, I want you to use me in such a measure that I will have an impact in this country so that through my life, every church should double. You understand? I have built 500 and more churches. If I had saved all that money, I would have crores of rupees in the bank. But I didn't do that. A very big senior pastor told me one day, said, Pastor Paul, we all built big, big, fancy buildings and wasted all the money into the concrete. But you always focused on building churches for others. In those days, if you had saved all your money, how many crows you would have had in the bank? See, that should be our purpose. If you are a man of God listening to me, I want to tell you, don't only build your church. Help all men of God and help them so that they also can build their ministry. Today I have built over 145 some churches in Karnataka alone. I have given crores of rupees from my church. I could have kept it and saved it, but we didn't do that. We had a passion and we have a passion. Today in our own district, I support over 225 pastors. Overall, I support over 500, 600 pastors. Why I'm doing all this? I never stopped my support to the pastors because I wanted to see them happy. So I sent the support to all of them because I want them to take that money and work hard to advance the kingdom of God. So it is not Paul Thangaya's ministry or Exus ministry or Sammy Thangaya's ministry or you know, Chacha's, John V. Thomas's ministry. No, it is all about the advancement of the kingdom of God. And that's our purpose, my friends. And so in my conclusion, I would like to draw your attention. Now, Apostle Paul never cared about what those preachers told about him. He never operated in anger. He could have retaliated and made a crowd to retaliate to those preachers. 
And Apostle Paul was never unfriendly to those people. They were treating him so bad. They were treating him scornfully. And they were trying to walk over Apostle Paul's beautiful ministry he had established. But Apostle Paul says, all that matters to me is that Christ is preached or Christ was preached. Where will you and me put ourselves today when we study this beautiful, you know, four verses? We would be upset, right? We would be hurt. So many people write about me in the YouTube and they write so many things. There was a time I used to get so upset and angry and I used to even think to do some, you know, deal with these people. But later I realized, as I started to grow in God, that ministry comes with all these package. How much ever you do for God, people will never appreciate you. How much ever you do for God, people will criticize you. How much ever you work hard, people will still hate you. So these are all the package in the ministry. So we should not ever take these things to our mind and destroy the peace that God has given to us and lose our focus in preaching about Jesus Christ. So I want to challenge you, dear friends. All that matters for you and for me, if I belong to a church, if I am a leader, I am an elder, whatever I am, I am doing all this, not for someone to appreciate me, but I am doing all this because I am focused with that one purpose, and that is the advancement of the gospel. Now, listen to this. All too often we resent when someone else gains prominence or a credit which we do not get. When someone else is lifted up above you, or above us, or they are put in prominent places, we feel hurt. But Apostle Paul says, I'm not upset about all these things. For me, all that matters is the gospel must be preached. And Rome and Asia must know that Jesus came not only for the Jews, but for the Gentiles, and all of them should come to the light of Jesus Christ. Now, many a times we think of a person as our enemy because they have criticized us or our methods. But remember, Paul is telling, I want to go beyond this. How long I'm going to sit and talk about people talking bad and doing things. Paul says, I need to go beyond this. So he says, beyond everything and everybody, all that mattered was that Christ was preached. Can you please write it down? Beyond everything and everybody, all that mattered was that Christ was preached. He never bothered about what happened to him through these people. So I encourage you, dear friends, and I ask you this question. Where do we stand today? Have you been hurt? 
in spite of being so faithful to God? Have you been wounded by people in spite of serving the Lord and the people so faithfully? Or do you get upset when people criticize you? Or you, go, you get so angry and go mad when someone tells things about you? I want to challenge you. Put yourself in the shoes of Apostle Paul. Already in the jail. It's a tough situation in the jail. They never had any, you know, any love, compassion. I had my heart attack and everybody prayed and I came out happily. But so many men of God sat and had coffee, tea and told the people that your tiger, Paul Thunga, has gone. And that's it. See, he had a big thing happening. And today is over and they were laughing. So people, when they came and told me, for a moment I felt hurt. I have a habit of not telling things to anybody. My mommy always says he will keep it, keep it in his heart. He won't tell it to people. How much ever he is hurt, he will just go and pray and won't talk it to people. Because it's very tough to trust someone and talk out things. It's good to trust the Lord. I know it may sound a little spiritual, but when you keep growing in your ministry, you need to talk to somebody, share your burdens. But many a times we go through so many hurts whole day. Everything you can't be talking to people. But you need to focus yourself on the call that God has given to you. If you are a Bible college student who have listened to me today, get ready. Everybody will not like you, but you have a passion, you keep going, and God will take you to the next level. I hope you enjoyed our Bible doctrine. Blessed. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this awesome day, O oh God. You have taught us so beautifully from the life of Apostle Paul. We never thought that so many people were against him and his ministry. But God, Apostle Paul never took this. He went beyond everyone, every, everybody and everything of God. And he said, I'm going to move forward. We should never have that spirit of erythemia. Our, our life should be totally sold out with the passion and the desire we have for your kingdom. Help us not to look for preeminence and help us to be humble. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.